Federal Express ships nearly 4 million packages to over 200 different countries. Not only do they dominate the express shipping business, they've redefined it. Tonight we go behind closed doors of the $19 billion global enterprise that is FedEx. They ship just about anything, anywhere, overnight. From high-tech computers to well-packaged walruses. Overnight package delivery is so common today, it's hard to imagine life without it. But 30 years ago, FedEx founder Fred Smith had to convince people of this visionary idea. We needed to go in and tell people, we can pick up your item and transport it to many different locations. So we had to build a network first before we had a product. To build that network, Fred created the hub system. His brainstorm was to fly all the packages to one central location for sorting and then send them on to their destination city. Fred chose Memphis as the central hub. You balance the United States uh, on a, an imaginary uh, spindle uh, with the weight of all of the people in the country, so it just stays flat right there. Uh, Memphis was close to the center. It had a wonderful airport with wonderful weather. In 1973, Fred Smith bought 33 small planes and began offering overnight delivery between 25 cities. The first night, FedEx sent only 186 packages. In fact, the company lost a million dollars a month for its first two years. But gradually, businesses started realizing they couldn't live without it. Today, FedEx has nearly 700 planes and 150,000 employees around the world who make it absolutely positively possible to deliver shipments to every continent except Antarctica. There are now 15 hubs around the globe, but the Memphis airport is still the busiest point in the FedEx universe. Go! Every night, they stage the world's biggest game of beat the clock. Go! As I discovered when they allowed me to go behind their closed doors and join their team. It's an awesome organizational job, and they pull it off in a unique marriage of brute force and state-of-the-art technology. While frontline employees fill planes with that day's shipments, their operations are directed by supervisors a few miles away inside this heavily secured building known as the bunker. It's the central nervous system of FedEx, and they gave me access inside this secretive complex. Behind these closed doors is the Global Operations Center, the information brain for FedEx. Here, meteorologists monitor the weather while specialists track the progress of every plane, truck, and package worldwide. This finely tuned operation is overseen by Pete Gwaltney. Uh, busiest time of day here is probably about 8 at night till 5 in the morning because you're recovering 150 airplanes into Memphis, but they're generating flight plans for all the hubs around the, the world. That's originating out of Memphis, Anchorage going to Hong Kong. FedEx has a plane in the air somewhere around the globe every minute of every day. The single biggest cause for delays? Weather. We have our own meteorologists who monitor and forecast the weather for all the FedEx operations around the world. For example, uh, the weather radar he's uh, showing you can display not only the rain, but also the mixture of rain and freezing rain and then when it turns to snow. Every night, operations specialists meet to track and strategize about weather conditions, maintenance problems, and any anticipated flight delays. So it looks like there's a low-pressure system moving into the New York area. This company has a contingency plan for every emergency. What if one of your planes coming from L.A. breaks down? We have an aircraft that comes out of Portland, Oregon, empty, and we can divert that aircraft to L.A. to recover that freight. So wait a minute, so you're saying that you just have aircraft without any parcels on it sitting on the ground waiting? Yeah, those are our flying spares. And we have aircraft like that throughout our system. So there is no, this flight is canceled and it's not going? Yeah, that's how we differ from the passenger carriers. And we can't hand our passengers, our boxes, off to anyone else, as the carriers can hand you off to another carrier. We have to recover ourselves because there's nobody we can give our freight to. 
Despite all its high-tech tools, one of the company's biggest secret weapons is this huge visual aid, the World Board. Yes, each one of these uh, strips represents a uh, aircraft that's uh, operating within the FedEx system somewhere within the next seven days. What do the different colors mean? What's yellow? Yellow is an uh, aircraft that's operating within Asia. Asia mm -hmm. and blue? Blue is an aircraft that's operating within the European uh, community. And white? White is South America. Now, what does this mean? This is going from Hong Kong? Hong Kong to Narita, Japan. Narita, Narita Japan to Anchorage. Anchorage, mm -hmm. Anchorage, Anchorage to, to Chicago. Chicago. Chicago to, to JFK. JFK. JFK to Atlanta. Atlanta to? Dallas. Dallas. Dallas to? Anchorage. Anchorage. Anchorage back to Narita. That's correct. Is this the same crew? No, not the same crew, oh. but the same airplane. All the thing, everything is wow. identified by the tail number. In just a couple of days? From the morning of the 2nd until the night of the 3rd. Wow. FedEx employs 3,750 pilots, and they train inside this mammoth facility, which houses multi-million dollar flight simulators. Every six months, pilots get a refresher course culminating in a simulator where they fly their routes in every possible weather condition. Everything from hurricanes to snowstorms to dust storms to smoke, uh, any type of weather that you've ever thought of, we can reproduce in the simulators. FedEx allowed me to experience flying one of its daily international runs. Taking off from the company's Pacific Rim hub in Subic Bay, Philippines, right. then heading up to land in Anchorage, Alaska. And FedEx 24, you're clear for takeoff. Runway 07, winds are 030 at 10 knots. FedEx 24, clear for takeoff. Okay, ready to go? Ready to go. Just keep her in the center of the runway. Okay. I'm bringing the power up. That's it. Keep it coming back. Keep it coming back. Very nice. Now stop it right at the crosshairs. Very nice. Positive, right? I'm bringing your landing gear up. This simulator recreates the cockpit of an MD-11, the largest plane in the FedEx fleet. Even with all the gauges and automated controls, I found keeping it on course quite a challenge. That's it, just keep following the little flight bar. And back to the left a little bit. And to the left, sorry. <laughs> altitude. What does that mean? Just means we reached out to that we had set on the uh, Altitude alerter. I'm sweating. <laughs> You're doing great. I think so too. I was amazed at how the simulator could give me such a realistic sensation of flying. Then it was time for the acid test. I assume we're right. going to land this thing before we get to those white mountains. <laughs> <That's your laughs> idea. The runways uh, are right uh, before we get to those mountains. Makes it uh, really? very interesting. This is so real. I can hardly now we're coming even out believe of the cloud. it. Joan, oh, you wow. should be see, able to see. see the ground coming up on okay, the left-hand right hand side. And if you look straight forward, you should be able to see the runway now. Hey, have you got, it's uh, snowing right, here. Here we go. Big time snowing. And Big we're moving. Snowing. Okay. All right, Joan, we're approximately uh, nine miles from the end of the runway. You should see the approach lights I see lights it right there. there. Those little Very lights good. that are pulled back. Start pulling back. back. Yes. Start That's pulling back good. harder. 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 Oh, Very good. Now push forward and slightly. Push forward? Yes. We're on the ground. Uh, Great uh, job. Uh, now just steer okay. it down the center like you did on the takeoff. Congratulations, okay. Joan. We're in Anchorage, Alaska, and you just landed wow. an MD-11. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. Nice job. Thank you. Here we go. When we come back, I join the night team as they race to beat the clock at the FedEx Super Hub. Behind Closed Doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Behind Closed Doors with Joan London continues here on a and &E. It's 10 p.m. in Memphis, Tennessee. Though much of the city is winding down for the night, the workday is just gearing up for the town's largest employer, FedEx. Out at the Memphis airport, a small army of 13,000 people is converging, reporting to work at the FedEx Super Hub. Although it's the middle of the night, here at the control tower at the FedEx Hub, it's rush hour. 
Between the hours of 11 p.m. and 5 a.m., this is the busiest airport in the world. 160 aircraft land in just over two hours, more than one touching down every minute. 1446 ramp tower, beacon approved. Once on the ground, each plane taxis in and parks at its designated spot on the ramp. It's met by a team that must unload the plane in less than 20 minutes. This is off this side a little over here. All right. The belly of the plane is filled with huge cargo containers called cans that weigh about three tons each. Now I'm really kind of surprised about how easily they, you can push them, right. but that's because the whole bottom is just covered with these wheels, rollers. Right, it's called a transition deck. The point of the transition deck is to speed up the process. Once the cans are all loaded onto a dolly, they're towed by a small tractor called a tug. Dante Arnold guided our load through this whirlwind of activity. There's no room for any slackers out here. Not at all. No. You'll find that out real soon. Yeah. Slackers, not. slackers need not apply. That's right. <laughs> all right. The boxes are offloaded onto the first belt of a giant assembly line. In this business, every second really counts. We're under the gun to get the freight unloaded. You know, we're just like a hungry baby. You know, we're crying for more and yeah. more and more freight. Did you ever see that Lucille Ball episode, you know, with oh, the assembly exactly. line? We're trying to That's keep what up. I think yeah. about. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like that. We're trying to constantly trying to keep up. The belts whisk the boxes inside the 294-acre sorting facility. It's an incredibly vast network of conveyors, chutes, and slides. Any package can be located in this maze at any time. This four by four inch piece of paper may be the most important weapon in the FedEx arsenal. It's the barcode, the point of reference for each of the millions of packages that come through here every day. Each package is placed onto the belt with its tracking label up so laser scanners can read its barcode. As a box moves down the belt, its barcode triggers metal arms that divert it onto smaller sorting belts, matching the box with other packages headed in the same direction. Documents sent in smaller packages are handled in a separate assembly line called the soft package sorter. Again, the laser scan data triggers the pallets to flip the packages, sending them on to the correct destination bin and into a waiting bag, which is gathered and readied for its outbound flight. Sorting must finish by 2 a.m. in order to load the packages onto their outbound flights. The biggest pressure is on the crew loading the planes for Newark Airport, which handles the New York City market. 40% of all FedEx deliveries go in or out of New York City. And if the first plane isn't in the air by 3 a.m., the packages will never make it on time. Uh, the Newark outbound itself, um, it's the most critical in the hub. It's mainly dealing with the Holland and the Lincoln tunnels. It's not through the tunnel by 6 a.m. It's not going to make service into the city. Before leaving the hub, each package is scanned one last time to confirm it's headed onto the right plane. With precious seconds ticking away, the load crews race to fill the planes. Boy, they really pack these things like sardines, don't they? <laughs> Definitely. It's amazing. All right, I guess it's important that everything fits in really tight just so things don't slide around. Definitely. We can't have anything shipping in the air. We don't want anything to mess up the weight distribution while they're in the air. So we locked everything down. I, keep, I see you. You keep looking at your little stopwatch. Are you making the time? We're making the time. We're doing an excellent job tonight. We have about five minutes before this plane leaves. It'll take us two or three to close it up, and so we're good to go tonight. This looks like your last one coming in. This is it. You're all packed up. Up. Oh, it's coming down. We're closing it up. Okay? Good. good job. Thank you. You made your time. We did it. All right. Thanks for letting Thank me help. Another flight is loaded and on its way right on time. After landing in their destination cities, the packages will be sorted again and distributed to teams of couriers who drive their trucks to your door.
FedEx drivers log two and a half million miles each day, the equivalent of 100 trips around the Earth. FedEx, a global operation whose success is due in large part to the night shift at the Memphis Superhub. I'd like to extend my personal thanks to all those who helped us gain unprecedented access to make this show possible. Please join us next time when once again we go behind closed doors. For A&E, I'm Joan London.